Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us to another week of Parenting Tips webinar. In this opportunity, um, we're going to be talking about self-esteem and confidence. Um, Ms. Roxana is here with us today to help us uh, support our discussion at the end of the presentation. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. So um, when it comes to discussing self-esteem uh, and confidence in children and teens, uh, the focus is you know, typically on girls, right? Uh, but experts say also that boys' self-confidence is at risk too uh, because of, of gender stereotypes, uh, and which leave them also feeling inadequate when they believe they don't meet expectations and gives them a few outlets to express their feelings. So in general, we all want our children to develop skills that uh, will enable them to be successful. Uh, but just as important is the confidence to use those skills and the self-esteem they will need to make, to make good, good decisions. So self-esteem is an individual subjective evaluation of their own worth, and it encompasses beliefs about oneself and emotional states. Some related concepts to self-esteem are self-concept, which is a general term used to refer how someone thinks about, evaluates, or perceives themselves, or to be aware of oneself is to have a concept of oneself, right? Another concept is self-efficacy, which reflects confidence uh, in the ability to exert control over one's own motivation, behavior, and social environment. And self-confidence, that is the understanding that you trust your own judgment and abilities, and that you value yourself and feel worthy regardless of any imperfections or, or, or of what others may believe about you. So there are various factors believed to influence our self-esteem. And this might include uh, personality, genetics, life experience, age, health, thoughts, social circumstances, and others' opinion. An important thing to remember is that self-esteem is not fixed. It is malleable and measurable. This means that we can test and uh, we can test it and we can measure it and, and we can improve upon it. So, Self-esteem, last week, Ms. Roxana uh, shared, uh, based her presentation more for young learners and explained very well how self-esteem is developed from an early age. Uh, and it starts as early as babyhood. It, de it develops slowly over time and it can start just because, you know, a child feels safe, loved and accepted. And it can start uh, when a baby gets positive attention and loving care. As babies become toddlers and young children, they're able to do some things all by themselves. They feel good about themselves when they can use those new skills and their self-esteem starts growing when parents pay attention, let them try new things, give them smiles and show they are proud of them. As kids grow, self-esteem can grow too. Anytime kids try things, do things, and learn things can be a chance for self-esteem to grow. This can happen when kids, for example, make progress toward a goal, learn new things at school, make friends and start getting along with them, learn new skills, for example, be, uh, playing a musical instrument, learning new sports, art, cooking, tech skills practice their favorite activities, help, give, or, or be kind in general, when they get praise for their good behaviors, 
when they try hard at something, when they are included by others, or when they are also feel understood and accepted, and when they do things that they know they are good at and they enjoy. These are some examples uh, uh, that can help children to uh, develop their self-esteem. Sometimes it's easy to notice when kids seem to feel good about themselves and when they don't. Uh, there are some attitudes uh, children may display when they have positive self-esteem, such as you know, feeling liked and accepted, uh, feeling confident, feeling proud of what they can do, think good things about themselves, and believe in themselves. On the other hand, kids with low self-esteem can be self-critical and hard on themselves. They, they feel they are not as good as other kids. Uh, they may think that uh, of the times they fail rather than when they succeed, they lack confidence and they in general, when they get praise for their good behaviors, when they try hard at something, when they are included by others, or when they are also feel understood and accepted, and when they do things that they know they are good at and they enjoy. These are some examples uh, uh, that can help children to uh, develop their self-esteem. Sometimes, it's easy to notice when kids seem to feel good about themselves and when they don't. Uh, there are some attitudes uh, children may display when they have positive self-esteem, such as you know, feeling liked and accepted, uh, feeling confident, feeling proud of what they can do, think good things about themselves and believe in themselves. On the other hand, kids with low self-esteem can be self-critical and hard on themselves. They, they feel they are not as good as other kids. Uh, they may think that uh, of the times they fail rather than when they succeed, they lack confidence and they, okay. So um, we were here, <laughs> uh, I apologize for this in so many interruptions. Okay, we were saying that um, they, they even let other, other, other students or other or friends treat them poorly because uh, they may have a hard time defending themselves or standing up for themselves. And they may give up easily or not try at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not moving forward. Sorry. Now, so I'm going to try. So sorry. Okay. Here we are. Okay. So are we fostering healthy self-esteem? That's the, the question, right? I think you're here today because you wanna find the answer to this question. Uh, well, the first thing we need to know is that every child is different and, and self-esteem uh, may come easier to some kids than others. And some kids face things that can lower their self-esteem throughout their life. But even if a child's self-esteem is low, it can be raised, okay? So that, that is a good news. So, what real self-esteem self looks like. Uh, we need to be clear about this so we, to understand how can we help children in a better way. The key to breaking free from low self-esteem is to move beyond self-focus. Real self-esteem is not about believing we are special or wonderful. Real self-esteem means being able to let go the question, am I good enough? Because a person that is always asking this uh, is comparing himself or herself to others. And of course, we are all different and we will find things that uh, we don't feel good enough or we don't feel um, that 
or that might be some weaknesses. So real self-esteem means to be able to let this go and to think about uh, so think about when 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 you when you when you get together with a close friend, your friend knows you. You have a relationship uh, it, that may last a long time, but you're not sitting there just thinking and wondering, oh, does my friend like me, or is my friend impressed by me, or 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 asking, is, is my friend going to dump me? Because those questions don't even come up because you're not thinking about yourself. You're just enjoying the moment. The, the 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 nice time you're spending together instead of that you're completely focused on the conversation and the activity with this friend which brings a satisfying sense of ease and comfort so real self self-esteem involves that developing the this type of fully engaged presence in what we are doing right now uh when we are not mentally standing back and judging ourselves we are free to listen and learn and try and experience. That's why mindfulness, which we are we we always mentioning and talking about that, it's so important. It's to understand the importance of being here and now, being present. So, how do we help kids with low self-esteem stand be a step beyond self-focus so so they can uh, let go all these harsh self-evaluations? Well, extensive research uh, shows that the key lies in addressing children's fundamental needs of connection, competence, and choice. Connection involves building meaningful and satisfying relationships that creates a sense of belonging. Competence refers to embracing learning and developing mastery in certain areas. And choice is about making decisions that reflect personal values. We don't need to boost our children's self-esteem. Instead, what we need to do, or what we want to do is to ease that hard self-focus that is the root cause of low self-esteem by helping them connect with something bigger than themselves. If you want to know more about, about this, there's a, a very interesting article that I, um, that I posted. Uh, it, it is from Aileen Kennedy Moore. It is from the Electronic Magazine uh, Psychology Today. It's a very interesting article that's titled What We Get Wrong About Children's Self-Esteem. And also there's another resource with 11 tips on building self-esteem in children if you want to begin more on this topic. Um, remember, don't compare your child to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They shine when it's their time, okay? So now uh, let's open the chat or you can unmute yourself for questions or comments. Um, Let me open the chat. If you want to share an experience, if you have a question, I'm so sorry uh, with the many interruptions, maybe the idea got lost at some points. If you want to go over something uh, again, we can do that too. Okay. Ms. Manzanares, I don't know if you want to add something to, our, to the presentation or Ms. Roxana, if you have a comment. Last week, Ms. Roxana uh, introduced us to this topic and um, uh, talk about development of self-esteem uh, in younger children. So if you have other children and you couldn't attend, uh, the, the, the materials are uploaded in our website. You can access them. Mm -hmm. I just think, Ms. Uh, Jenny said that 
uh, self-esteem is such a an, an important part of child development that I think it's something that we all have to keep in mind and to be conscious that whatever we say and whatever we think of our children and what we expect them to do is what we're going to receive in return. So if we expect them to act positively, if we transmit positive feedback, um, I think they will rise to that um, expectation. Yeah, definitely. They, they learn by modeling, right? The power of, of modeling is very important. And um, the way we talk to ourselves, we, 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 we were talking about this last week also, the way we talk to ourselves, the way we talk to them, if we are constantly, you know, criticizing or pointing out uh, mistakes or things they cannot do right, of course, uh, what that will impact on, on that self assessment. And they learn to be very judgmental and they, they learn to, to, to develop a negative self dialogue in which they are always criticizing themselves and complaining about the things they, they cannot do. Uh, and also I think um, it's really positive what you mentioned today about the concept of self-esteem not being fixed. This means that when implementing um, some of the strategies or tips that Ms. Batista shared today, you might uh, improve the self-concept and value how, how valuable your child feel he or she is. Um, so it's, it's really important. It's not like, oh, the self-esteem is like this and it won't change. It can change with the appropriate approach and care. Yeah, and it can go from a high self-esteem to a low self-esteem and vice versa. And it, 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 it is in constant development throughout life. It, it's, not, it's not stable. It's, it's something that we, when we discuss the factors, there are many factors that influence on that. So that's a good thing to know that we, we can always be, you know, aware of, of, of what's going on and help them, um, yeah. It says my connection is unstable again. Can you listen to me? Hello? I'm here, I'm still here. It says my connection was as unstable. Yeah, Maria uh, mentioned on the, on, the, on the chat that is, this is a uh, good point, especially now that some of them are near the teens. Yes, it's, it, it, it takes an, an, a, a different relevance, okay? It's always important, but right now, since they are going through, uh, for example, fifth graders that are kind of preteens, they are coming to, those, to, to that age, that stage of life, uh, they're receiving a lot of feedback from, from their peers. They're more aware of, of their surroundings, of, of their relationships, about the, the, the meaning of, of different behaviors or things that were more, they couldn't understand before or, or, or in an early stage of life because they were more concrete. Now that they're more, their thoughts, it's, it's more uh, abstract. They can understand relationships in a different way and that impacts them and that impacts their self-esteem. So yes, this is, this is very important. And of course, if we have to discuss this topic uh, for teenagers, there will, some, there, there will be other things to take into consideration based on that particular stage of life. So uh, as a wrap up, remember self-esteem, it's not fixed. It's something that we can improve and it can change also from, from positive to low self-esteem based on different experiences in life. Uh, there are things we can do to support it, to, to help it, to help our, our, our children improve it. And we have to remember, we have to, to, to look it through the glasses of, you know, developmental stage, okay? So we appreciate your presence here today. Thank you very much for joining us. And we hope to see you next week in another session of Parenting Tips. Have a great afternoon, everyone.
Bye. Thank you.